Channel Islands are amazing for the discoveries, archeological, historical, ecological, biological, that, that they've produced over the last 150 years of scientific investigation. One of the wonderful things about the Channel Islands is that there are no burrowing animals. There's no gophers, there's no ground squirrels, there are no earthworms, there's no termites, nothing that's churning those deposits. And so for an archeologist and a geologist, it's just a wonderful record because it's just like a layer cake. You can look at the different strata and, and really get a refined, uh, precise look at changes that have occurred through time. Our curator of anthropology here at the Santa Barbara Museum of Natural History was Phil Orr. One of the interesting research questions he was pursuing was the story of the pygmy mammoth. It's clear, say 20,000 years ago, the Ice Age was still full swing. We had mammoths all over the larger island of Santa Rosa, which included Anacapa, Santa Cruz, Santa Rosa, and San Miguel. Where did pygmy mammoths come from? Looking at mammoth behavior, we, we use as a model of modern elephants. And there are documented cases of elephants swimming over 20 miles. It's believed that this particular animal evolved originally from the Colombian mammoth uh, represented here that originally colonized the Northern Channel Islands to what they evolved to ultimately on the Channel Islands is the pygmy mammoth. And that species disappeared right around the time window when Native Americans show up on the islands. Phil Orr first came out here in 1941. And so he probably began building this camp somewhere right around the late 1940s. His purpose, I think, in making his camp on this part of the island was because it's such a hot spot for all the things he was interested in. The pygmy mammoth bones, there's lots of great archeology span here oh. covering all periods of prehistory. I would characterize him as the last of the bone hunters. I think he's a fascinating character because he did so many good things and he did some things that are really off the wall and wild and crazy. Well, Phil, Phil Orr used some techniques by today's standards that would be uh, uh, not approved, I think. He was interested in whether humans and pygmy mammoths were together on the islands at the same time, and that led him to look very deep in the deposits, much deeper than we usually find archeological sites. Well, as I understand it, this wasn't publicized greatly, you know, Orr loved to drive his Jeep, and what he was doing was putting a road across Arlington Canyon. They were down here trying to get to the other side of the canyon. They got mired down, and they were extricating the Jeep, and they looked up and saw this femur sticking out of the cliffside and carefully scraped around it and exposed the whole profile to show that in fact it was intact in an ancient arroyo that had later filled in. He found two human femurs protruding from the sidewall of Arlington Canyon, 37 feet below the existing ground surface. He knew at that point enough about the geological relationships in these deep alluvial beds on Santa Rosa to know that he was way back in time. And so he got a grant to bring some of the leading scientists of his day, the leading archeologists, right. and, and they came out here and they were very critical. You know, they oh, were, yes. yeah, they weren't necessarily gonna buy into this, but they all agreed that the Arlington bone was buried in an original sediment layer. It wasn't the result of recent erosion. Phil could not date the actual bones themselves because in those days, radiocarbon dating would have consumed all of the bones and there were problems with bone protein dating. And he collected some charcoal nearby the bones, which he radiocarbon dated to about 10,000 years ago. And so what Phil Orr did was the smart thing. He wrapped the original soil matrix containing the bones, wrapped it in a plaster jacket, and removed it here to the mainland. I had read Phil Orr's Prehistory of Santa Rosa Island. That was the go-to book resource to look at. I read that, came here and saw what was on the island and said, or didn't get it all. There's an awful lot of material here that looks unstudied and was informed by the ranch foreman. I was the first archeologist to set foot on these islands in 17 years. I realized that I had struck gold. 
The ranch foreman showed me a burial. These turned out to be at the oldest positively dated burial in California. So I thought, okay, if this burial at Lobos Canyon is old, what about Arlington Man? Uh, 1987, I was just newly hired at the Santa Barbara Museum of Natural History. And this archeologist from Channel Islands National Park, who I'd met once or twice, he came to me and he says, John, I understand you have a block of earth stored there at the museum that has the bones of Arlington Springs Man that Phil Orr excavated back in 1960. And I said, well, I'd seen something in the basement covered with plaster that had the name Arlington Springs written on it, but I didn't know anything about it and you led me down into the sub-sub basement. The catacomb. As I recall, you had to brush the tarantulas off my back. And we find this block, and bingo, it's Christmas time.